Hello, welcome back to Penosushi Life Noting. In this episode, we're gonna um, further continue our exploration of this um, duplicate objects along edge node. Now we already know it's capable of um, generating like some kind of sweep, even though it's not perfect because of the twisting and stuff. Maybe there's something that can be kind of um, can be studied further or can be fixed at some point um, in Spreadshop. For now, but let's take a look at this guy. And this guy is um, if we bake it, it's really becoming like um, a single object mesh uh, with all this um, polygon face. And for that, we actually can do something. Yeah, remember, remember, circle. We can change it to triangles, and with triangles, you can see. Um, some kind of directional along edge and that's how I think that's the direction of the edge itself um, I cannot seem to control the circle here just leave it at that but I can control the padding and also I can control how many how many duplications per per edge so this is um, I think very very interesting because why because we remember that for for every triangle if we actually output the triangle um, as a real object um, let me do that instead of view a draw this is like a um, stretch of preview we want we want it as a real object so we use a viewer B mesh let's output this guy like that. So now we have a real object and it, it has direction. If I use an object like you can, we can use Suzanne head, but I'm gonna use something different like uh, our my snail little logo there. It's currently I think it's facing the x axis, negative x axis. I think it should be correct. If I am kind of um, duplicating the snail. It should be facing the right way. So let me try. I select the snail in the zero zero uh, at the zero zero zero, and then select our uh, um, this whole P parent parent the snail. Select this guy, the the arrow, and then if I go to the dupli, this is this is actually Blender Blender's own feature. We can see that the snail is being duplicated. Now it's actually has some kind of direction along age it's not like 100% correct but it's pretty all right it's pretty decent that's a uh, really nice right because the thing about um, duplication or blender dupli is that this thing is really 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 efficient it's uh, um, because it's using blenders instancing so you can have something that's super um, high dense and super high resolution together with dupli and as a result um, let's say even even I have like a 1000 let me try uh, 500 first 500 snail on the screen it's a uh, it's this is really really heavy but still blender can handle it still pretty fast let me reduce that back to 50 the 50 snail and high res still pretty fast you can render this using cycles and should be no problem if I display only render you see only the snail and the dot is from spray chalk it's gonna be rendered if I turn on ambient occlusion matcap looks a bit nicer so yeah this is exactly um, duplicate along duplicate duplicate objects along edge can be used for don't try to um, import high res object into spread chalk and then use it inside duplicate objects because that's gonna be so heavy for spread chalk because what's what's going on is um, spread chalk is gonna be using that um, data the data of this snail this snail is actually quite heavy so you can see that it's, it's pretty dense. Um, 
don't do that because Spreadshow gonna load all the data and doing the duplications. What Spreadshow can do is actually to use this data for the snail. For example, if you wanna connect the points of each snail, Spreadshow can do that. That's not what you want in this case. If you really want to duplicate objects, let's say you have like a, some kind of a, like a room or like a tunnel that's quite quite dense and you want to duplicate it along edge or you want to or maybe you have like a lamp or maybe like a car a bunch of cars or buildings you can use a duplicate along edge together with blender dupli duplications to do this and this should be no problem uh, if I increase the number of see number of um, snail per edge it's like no problem at all it's like so fast let me turn the padding to zero, for example. Uh, I think the snail is not facing the right way. I wonder why, but we can always rotate our circle, I guess. Now let me try rotate. Euler in the Z. Okay, see, I'm rotating the rotating the snail look at it from the top and our auto graphic now after rotating it like 30 degree now I get this guy to line up so this is nice <laughs> I didn't know that we can do this using spreadshot earlier but I, I found this note by chance by accident scale all metrics keep apply apply matrices of course we want to apply matrices um, that's uh, rendering it using cycles cycle by the way in this version of um, blender is really really fast I like it a lot um, let me give it a material diffuse material give it a color oops it's not seems like Okay, maybe the material comes from the actual the triangle. I'm not sure. Um, Outliner. That's the GP layer. That's that's the curve. This is the alpha. Okay, the snail. Give it a material. Turn off my cap. There we go. That's a snail material. Green. Okay, nice. Um, to be able to control the snail individually, we might actually need to do this scaling thing over here. Um, let me try. No, this guy doesn't control the scaling. Maybe the matrix can. With the scaling center polygons, there's this matrices that's coming out. Yeah, so that's not corresponding to this guy. Oh, okay, just now I'm plugging in the matrix from this to that guy, maybe maybe that's not a good idea, that's a different thing. Um, we actually, in this case, we don't need all those. You can just plug this guy in there and the faces. Oh, but that's giving. But I need to mess join it or merge merge it. Okay, merge it so it's working. This matrix that mm -hmm. 
just a matrix maybe I can use matrix to form here random random scaling random vector let me try this I get it there you go that's actually somehow working random number generator and then vector in this should in theory should be working maybe if I separate it using split Hmm, probably not. That's not how it works. Well, at least we have the snail working. Um, actually, I should actually... Let me check real quick. Oh yeah, the scaling is indeed working. You don't need to list split it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now it's working as planned. Um, what's happening is the snail is um, is a blender dupli, right? And do the du with the dupli, of course. We need to be careful here. We need to turn on the scaling right here. So that's actually affecting the scaling and multiplier as well. Um, so now we have small snail and a big snail. And this is the this is the, the master. Uh, the master is always refill like that in, in Blender. But that's okay. At least we can now have small, small snail and a bigger snail. And they're all nicely plays a long path so that's um, that's really cool I'm, I'm happy with this and for the nodes itself I believe they are like random object in different places so we can use random maybe I don't know yet color random diffuse blah, blah. let me try random factor HSL clockwise, give it a different color. This can be yellow, blue, okay. Render it out. Ah, uh, okay. So they are they're not a different object or I'm using the raw material. Ah, oh, there you go. Magic. Always happens in Blender. I love this. I love this software. It's uh, so awesome. A lot of um, interesting thing that you think you think Blender cannot do that, but it actually can, and then it's always surprised me. Maybe. Um, so we have what is that line? 
Oh, they are actually floating. Okay. Place it on the ground. Have a snail on the path on the ground. So yeah, that seems to be working fine. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. So we can control a lot of things. Um, still, everything's still procedural. We can always go back to spare chalk and in this case, let's get rid of some of this that we don't need, just to make it simpler. I'm gonna give you this node tree, and so you can play around with it. I'm happy with this. Um, so we have 50 snail at the moment. We can have more because we are assembling um, this guy. But okay, I just noticed that I forgot to do one more thing. This uh, list length, this guy. Always remember, if you, in order for everything to work, you know, you need to take care of the total number. Okay, if we have sixty-six, make sure we have sixty-six um, data being generated on the fly. So now we are good. Now we can have hundred snail, no problem. 50 snail seems to be a good number 77 that's better so we can switch to material the material doesn't sh doesn't really show the coloring random coloring but I guess that's fine we have some like we have super bright scene here maybe make it like afternoon like a bunch of snail kind of um, a long path walking in the afternoon and we can have also a little bit of filtering remember the color management trick that's really cool um, you can use like film effects Kodak or Fujifilm Fujifilm give you like the pastelic kind of look so yeah this is a uh, I guess this is pretty much it for this uh, live noting video it's a um, Again, this is very chalk object along edge. This node has been there since the beginning of this live noding and I never touched it until today. So that's a surprise. And this node is really powerful, especially if you are doing instancing. But make sure that you do it like this, like um, using Blender Dupli or some kind of uh, particle instancing. Because instancing is different from using like a real data that you actually pass into Sphere Um with instancing you can have like a like high resolution 3d objects geometry and kind of rendering rendering it properly if you if you're doing it the right way like this uh, I guess this is a um, this is pretty good example um, if this is not clear yet I might do another live noting that's uh, that's using this object along edge because I really I really like this node a lot. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, suggestion, uh, 